Uh, Chris Chico, here's a perfect example. Chris Chico, this is years ago. He got a Discover card in the mail and with, for $10,000. And, and he, he loves sharing this story. He had $10,000 available on the, on the credit card. And it's like his credit actually wasn't all that great at the time. And so he used all the $10,000 to mail and made 100 grand. And by the way, he's made millions of dollars since then. Right. But he would have never done it if he didn't spend the money on marketing. Marketing is a return on investment. Um, if you have, you know, most markets, you know, fifteen hundred to twenty-five hundred dollars in marketing spend on average across the country should result enough leads to convert into a deal if you're talking to the seller. Hey, Matt Dario here at Epic Real Estate. Got a really hot show for you today on Thought Leader Thursday. We're going to talk about everything that's going on in the world right now around lead generation and uh, what you can do about it and generate more leads for yourself. So stay tuned. All right. So today I'm joined by a good friend of mine, longtime friend and fellow real estate investor. We run a lot in the same circles and uh, he's got a great service around lead generation. And I just thought, you know, what better person to have on to really dig in and He's really got his finger on the pulse, I guess, or the thumb or the finger? The thumb, thumb or the finger on the pulse of what's going on in lead generation, particularly when it comes around direct mail and, and follow up and the technology that's involved. And um, yeah, we recorded this, this episode probably whoo, a year ago or so. And we did such an amazing interview and I couldn't wait to share it. And then I lost the Zoom file of the screen full that we did. So we're gonna try and recreate that magic, but we're gonna go a little bit more deeper. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about what you can actually do yourself and, and, and emphasize or improve your only generation. Or maybe at the end, you just wanna has, have Gary do it all for you. So, and there's everything in between. Alrighty, so please help me welcome to the show, Mr. Gary Boomershine. Gary, welcome to Epic Real Estate Investing. Oh man, <clears throat> this is awesome, Matt. I, I know that when I found out that you lost that video, it was like, we went so deep. Right. And, um, and so I'm excited to be able to uh, have us do this again. I'll work to deliver some great value for your loyal, your loyal followers. Super. So yeah, I mean, and it's been a year and I know a lot of it is going on in your world. So just kind of bring me up to speed, I guess, give the, the, the Cliff Notes version of your, your background and, and what you've been doing in the last 12 months. Awesome. Yeah, I'll keep it short on my background. So my name is Gary Boomershine. I am in California. I'm about 45 minutes from San Francisco. Uh, I got labeled as one of the OGs by uh, some of the, as a, one of the old timers, they call that the original gangster. Uh, <laughs> I just heard that term. You, you and I were, when we were in Tampa yeah. with, gosh. When Asian I see I, you, that's the first thing I think of <laughs> <is> gangster. <laughs> um, so I've been around, I, I've, been, uh, I've been actually in real estate since 1987. I was a licensed agent. We had a family brokerage kind of, I was one of those stories where we were kind of forced to get into business. Um, I hated it actually. Mm -hmm. But I paid for college by holding open houses, door knocking, cold calling, and, uh, and finding listings and then fixing up our rental properties. And uh, I <clears throat> hated it. I told my dad I didn't want to have anything to do with real estate. I went and I got a computer engineering degree. So I am a kind of a tech geek. Mm -hmm. And I got uh, picked up by one of the biggest consulting firms. And then I did four high tech Silicon Valley startups back in the whole dot com days. And uh, it was great, man. 90 hour work weeks you know, traveling all over the world, never actually seeing uh, the sunlight because you're working all those hours. And it was right. finally in 2004, my wife and I, we basically had enough. I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I got excited about the concept of passive income and um, we were going to start buying apartments. So I, unlike, and I recommend, I recommend against this for everybody, but my wife and I actually, we had a two month old daughter. We had a four year old daughter. We had a $700,000 mortgage. My wife left her uh, Robert Mondavi uh, brand manager job, and I left a six-figure sales job in, in the Valley to go do real estate, right? <laughs> but I'll tell you, this has been an incredible journey. Um, so I've been doing it. I, I currently am in four markets. I'm a, a, I'm a lender. I do a ton of private lending, and I do wholesaling, and I pick up some creative deals, and I do some partnership deals, and, and it's awesome. I think the, the main thing that's interesting, <clears throat> you know, in this business, all the money is made when you're talking and making offers to sellers. In right. fact, it's not when you're doing it. Education's great. Masterminds are incredible. But really, you're not going to make money and move the marker and change our life until you're actually making offers and getting those deals. And um, I recognize that, especially with my background. And so I started a company um, and it was actually around direct mail. And you were there. It was actually, we were all at, at the Mastermind Collective Genius. Right. And 
there were 110 of us, right, talking about Podio, talking about direct mail. We're sharing the right postcard. Chris Chico had the, and Chris Richter had this amazing mailing list. Mm -hmm. And Joe McCall had Podio, right? Right. And I'm like, guys, everybody's, we're real estate people. What, what are we, you know, why don't we just have one team? Let's have one team that we share and, uh, and get massive leverage. And so I built that. It's called REI Vault. We've done over 30 million pieces of direct mail. Mm -hmm. I know that we're the largest marketer for real estate in the real estate niche. Um, we actually added a, a, an outbound phone team. So we do cold calling and skip tracing for our, our group. And um, the last month I actually just pulled up the numbers. It was 314,000 outbound phone calls and I got all the metrics. So we know what, we, we know what works and um, I love sharing it for, for your listeners. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll kind of provide on what we're seeing in terms of what's working. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they want to take some practical and tactical capabilities, they can implement them, themselves off of this or, you know, join us and you right. can actually tap into our group. Uh, we have uh, over 250 super experienced uh, real estate investors and agents using our service. And we basically, it's like for the cost of one resource of less than $10 an hour, you can have our team of experts not only do all the marketing for you and direct mail and pulling all the right magical lists, but also the phone work. So they can do all the text messages, mm -hmm. the ringless voicemail and cold calling to schedule appointments. And so, and that's new actually, since our last trip, I actually right. built that this last year. Sounds new. Perfect. Okay, good. So let's, um, let's kind of break it down from beginning to end. And then, uh, it's, then we're going to do a demonstration of how all of that stuff that we're going to talk about right now can all be just kind of done for you. This market right now is about finding off market deals. There, mm -hmm. you know, there's on market, which is typically MLS, bank owned foreclo you know, foreclosures and HUD properties. And that's all but dried up for the most part around the country. So we have to go direct to the seller. Well, mm -hmm. to go direct to the seller, you know, there's, there's some moving parts and, and you have to get all of them right, especially in this market. So a lot of people right now are doing direct mail and they say, oh, the, the leads suck. Um, the sellers aren't motivated. And it's like, no, you actually, you know, if you, if you drill in, they're missing the phone piece or the text messaging. So there's a funnel and all of these things have to be done. So I'm going to walk through on the left side. This is sort of, this is in, in, <clears throat> every one of these has to be done right, right. In, in, really to make the money. And some of these tasks or areas are like five to $10 an hour work. And some of them are a hundred or a thousand to $10,000 an hour. Right. And mm -hmm. as a real estate business owner, each of us, all of us on this call, on the show today, really should be doing the money-making activities, the thousand to $10,000 an hour work, which is negotiating with sellers, making offers, right? Negotiating on price and terms, raising money, growing, you know, growing their team, et cetera. Not like licking postcards and, and uh, talking to a mail house and dealing with spreadsheets. And so I'm going to walk through these and then I'll, sh I'll, I'll show you where REI Vault fits in because we pretty much do all of that for $10 mm -hmm. an hour. And I think we do it better. It's like the perfect unicorn, you know, the unicorn VA. Everybody says, oh, if I just hire somebody in the Philippines, well, yeah, you got to train them. You got to manage them. Okay. You got to keep them yeah. busy. All right. So it starts with marketing <clears throat> and marketing. There are multiple channels. And right now, and you know this, I know you, you preach this. This is in all the masterminds I'm in everybody that's really making the money, the seven and eight figures, they're doing two things really well, direct mail. So they're sending out effective, not just direct mail, direct response marketing, direct mail mm -hmm. marketing and cold calling. And the reason cold calling is an example, it's like, man, that's old school, but very few people are doing it. And when, when it's harder to do and get right. Uh, and so you got to do marketing, that's direct mail. Maybe oh. it's pay-per-click, Facebook, right? Then there's the fulfillment of it. So you got, you got to pick the mail house. You got to find the right mailing list. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm hearing from around the country is the two best mailing lists, Chris Richter and ours, REI Ball. I think, mm -hmm. you know, the, the way we're able to get the data is, uh, is very difficult for others. And you got to, you know, you got to do the weekly drops. So every single week, whether it's a Thursday, and by the way, the best week, the best day of the week to mail, what we have found is Thursday. Dropping mail on Thursday is going to get you the highest number of responses. And the reason we found that is that most of the sellers are, are, are calling on Tuesday or Wednesday the following week. They're not calling as often on the weekend. Um, the third is then you got to have 
you can't, when you're receiving the, the, the leads, you need a system. And it's actually multiple systems. A lot of us like Podio, it could be Investor Fuse. You know, there's Freedom Soft. There's a million. Some people have their own homegrown. But it's basically a place to capture the leads. Capturing them in email is, not, is ineffective. Um, you need a phone system like CallRail. You need to have a ringless voicemail like uh, Sly Broadcast and text messages. We actually like Twilio. Mm -hmm. um, then somebody needs to actually talk to the seller and answer those live calls, right? An inbound uh, phone team. And most of the calls come between 5 and 9 p.m. at night. So that also means somebody has to answer those calls live. That is, the people that are doing that are, are making a lot more money versus taking them to voicemail, all right? Then... There's some research before getting on the phone with the seller, typically having some research done, like pulling the pr property reports and the comparables and knowing what the value and the rent is before you talk to the seller. Somebody needs to have that, you know, that personal dialogue. Then there's the outbound phone team because a lot of these calls come in, right? And then there's actually talking to the seller, asking them the questions like how long have they owned the property and how's the condition? Is it currently rented, et cetera, with the right script. So all of this stuff has to be done. And then also the follow-up and the key to making money off of marketing is on the follow-up and typically text messages, ringless voicemails, emails, and direct phone calls at the right time with the right script. And so mm -hmm. the problem is usually a lot of people get stuck in the muck. They're in quicksand because they're trying to do all this themselves. And I found this and this is exactly why I built REI Vault. So we have a team of over 75 people um, that does all of this. So we can, for the cost, it's like, it's like having, it's, it's almost I, I, somebody who was it? I think it was Brett Burris that said, might've been Brett or, or Jamie. It said, it's all hiring you guys. You're an extension of our marketing and sales team. Like you guys are that extension. And it's like we hiring a COO and a chief marketing officer, a chief operating officer and a chief marketing officer mm -hmm. to help us out for like 10 bucks an hour to do all this stuff. And so, at the end of the day, we're doing the marketing and then ultimately we're divvying up and scheduling appointments. They're pre-screened, motivated, ready to go seller. So, you know, it's like instead of talking to hundreds or thousands of people, why not just be in front of the three or four per day right. at, where the sellers want to sell? So that's, that's first and foremost. Um, the other thing that we have found is, um, is, is the type of, the type of list uh, and, and I know you know this because you, you've been in CG. One of the things we've found with the mailing list, not all lists are equal. Right. Um, the, the absentee owner, what we're, it's really a burned out landlord. We're finding an absentee owner that has an inherited type of property, which means they inherited it from another family member and they've owned it for typically 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. Those are the gem properties. We actually found that there were 18 million of those properties in the United States. So out of a, that's 10%. So one out of every 10 houses is absentee owned in America, by the way, um, is absentee owned and inherited in high equity, which means they either have no mortgage or a low mortgage. And so right. those have been incredibly fruitful um, and, and hard to pull. A lot of people, you know, they, they don't know how to do it. It's expensive, right? It's time consuming, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And so we, We've really continued to craft and crack the code. And one of the things that's great, we've got 250 people with us. We've got some people that are doing $1,500 a month in marketing. We've got others that are doing 50,000. We're able to pull all that data, right? The results of what's working. And so it gives us better insight all over the country. So like I, 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 I talked to uh, Clay Manship. Clay Manship, he did one point, he did $2.3 million. This is a young guy, he's in his mid 20s in mm -hmm. Indianapolis. Um, he did $2.3 million last year in wholesale flips. And 1.3 million of that came from us. So mm -hmm. came from direct mail using our mailing lists. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, uh, I think his, his average was $620 in marketing spend per deal. Mm -hmm. And now it's starting to go up. It, 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 he's getting more competition and, and uh, there's right. definitely competition in the country. Okay, let me ask you to pause for a second. And I can actually vouch for those numbers because I have a few of my own REI ACE clients that are also clients of yours and they've got nothing but good things to say about it. So um, to, to hear Clay's numbers, I'm not surprised at all. So um, I'm going to try and ask, uh, ask the questions I think might be going through my audience's 
uh, mind. I've answered all, a lot of these questions myself already, but I just want to get a different perspective and be totally surprised by the answer. Okay, so um, let's start at the top on the marketing, right? So we talked about lists, and you know, I know Chris Rector is a good friend of mine, a good friend of yours, and that's all he does. He's just very, very much geeks out on the, the data and pulls really high quality lists. And kind of his secret sauce is he explained to me was he doesn't necessarily go and look for the people that are probably going to sell. He starts with a giant list, which gets very expensive and then eliminates all the people that probably aren't going to sell. And then you're left with what's left over. Right? So that's kind of his methodology. Um, when you're pulling your list and which one do you have like a, a message or an idea or a, <laughs> your message popped up and I said message. <laughs> how funny. Do you have, do you have like a, um, what's the word I'm looking at? Like a philosophy on how, how you or a strategy on how you pull your lists? Yeah. Yeah. We actually, it's, we, we're very similar to Richter. We do what's called a scoring algorithm mm -hmm. and, and we, you know, most people go to list source or real quest mm -hmm. and they're, they're doing a search and they're like clicking a button that says absentee owner and they're putting a last sale date in of like, you know, 2008 or, or before, and they're losing all the gems. The only way to get the data is, is what Chris Richter does, which is going out and getting the big list. So when we're building a, a mailing list for our members, we will, <clears throat> like Indianapolis is an example, we're gonna go and pull the big list, which is probably 250,000 names and addresses, and then all of the data around it. And then we'll start scoring it. So we're looking at like last sale date. If it's blank, that typically means the property has been held for more than 30 years. Those are high value targets. We've seen those are a higher probability. So those are going to get a higher ranking. Mm -hmm. um, if we've seen a, a inheritance deed change, an affidavit of death, there's about six or seven different classifications. We're going to score that higher. Um, we are going to look at the absentee owner. By the way, there's multiple ways of looking for an absentee owner. There's actually a checkbox and there's also some different addresses. And so we actually score multiple ways. Um, there's information on, um, on the, the area. We'll also look at the cash buyers. So we're looking at the cash buyers at the number of transactions by zip code mm -hmm. and ranking them because the ones where there's more cash buyer activity are going to be higher probability of, of good targets for our members. And so we're scoring that, then we'll take the 250,000 and we're usually narrowing it down and we're picking, it's typically about 18%. So about 18%. So the, <clears throat> I'm giving all this data. The problem for most people is if you go out to a company and you buy a list of, for 250,000 names and addresses, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. And, um, Very. and since we have, a, we have two, we're buying, Let's see, last month we bought two and a half million records, mailing records mm -hmm. and, uh, for our members. And we're doing that on, on, on a month. So we were able to negotiate massive discounts nationally with these data providers. In fact, I go directly to CoreLogic and I'm able to get right into their data center that nobody else in the country can do because you're going to have to spend $20,000 a month with a, you know, a guaranteed contract for a year. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the values of us like, working together sure you can compound all those uh or the costs or yeah. the, the savings you can compound the savings yeah i talked to steve carlson he's he's a, he's also a cg guy uh, also uses richter's list i mm -hmm. just talked to him last week and i interviewed him for one of our podcasts and he said he looked last year he's in san antonio and i and i asked him i said what's your best performing marketing channel and he said i looked at last year's numbers because i made my biggest deals my most profitable deals came from our, what we call our invisible list. And it was, it was pretty good. We were able to see like the results. I could, I, I have the ability of seeing, Hey, how many by, by the list and the type of postcard, what's the response rate? Mm -hmm. How many of those are turning into good net leads? What we'd call viable leads. How many are turning into appointments, contracts and deals closed. And so we're able to adjust and say, okay, you know, I'll, I'll give you another perfect example of two postcards. So you've probably heard this one. It's called the pink doodle. Mm -hmm. And this is, I think Joe Taylor was one of the, I think he may have come up with a multi-million dollar, uh, you know, investor, right. but the pink doodle, it's on peak paper. This has been super popular. Everybody's talking about the pink doodle and then the Google street view postcard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then on the right hand side, you got, this was actually a uh, Brad Chandler from express home buyer. And I mm -hmm. actually think that this card came from Jake, uh, Michael Jake, 
by the mm. way, because Michael said, hey, I, you guys are sending this postcard in my, my market. So, I, so two postcards. Now the question is, which one performs better? And everybody has been doing this pink doodle. And I'll right. tell you the 1031, the one on the left, mm -hmm. the ugly little white typewriter yep. outperforms four to one. So I'm going to get four times the number of calls on this 1031 exchange versus the pink doodle. Oh, by the way, the Google street view isn't performing at all. We're seeing very few results. So this is averaging about almost 4% response rate nationally. Yep. We've got a lot of markets about 1.6, uh, Google street views typically around one, 1%. And mm -hmm. so I love it because a lot of people are chasing the wrong right there. Maybe they got the right list. They're using our list or Richter's mm -hmm. list, but then they're using the wrong mail piece. And, you know, all this stuff, getting it right makes a big difference. Well, Gary, like you, you see this, like this pink doodle postcard used to crush, right? Yeah. The street view postcard used to crush when people were first doing you know, it. I mean, I've got a bunch yeah. of rental properties. I get these, these pieces all the time. And so now I get, you know, six street view postcards for each property and it's the exact same picture. So it doesn't stand out anymore. Yeah. Right? So yeah. the other one you have over here, the 1031 exchange, this is just a new version that looks different than what's everything else is that in people's mailbox. And everyone, after they watch this, are probably going to go use this and it's not going to work anymore. And there's going to be something else to follow up and it's going to work, right? Yeah. You remember, we, we, were the, we were the creator of the third notice. The, it's called Shock and Awe. And yeah. by the way, it still performs. But when, when Chris Chico designed that and he and I partnered on REI Vault and so but then everybody started using it. But when we first started using that third notice, we were averaging over 12% response rate. Mm -hmm. And now today it's about six, which mm -hmm. is still pretty fantastic. Yeah, that still uh, works for us actually. Yeah. We usually, we like to send that out first because it gets such a high response rate that it just fills our database and our follow-up system with a bunch of people. Yeah. So, and then yeah. we'll go ahead and- But you know, at the end of the day, here's the, here's the reality, you gotta get it out. Yep. So, so many people, so many investors get stuck on the little fairy dust postcard of finding a better postcard or a, a better list. At the end of the day, no, you know, there's a couple of lists, go get them and mail. All right. Mm -hmm. It's a numbers game. And even if, even if you're averaging 1% response rate or even less, I know guys like Justin Colby, I think he works on a 0.04% response rate in, in Phoenix and mm -hmm. still makes a ton of money. He's a seven figure investor. Yeah. Got to get the marketing out. Number one. Number two is it's a return on investment. Marketing is always a return on investment. You spend a dollar plan on making six or plan on making 10. Even if you're making around $4, that's still, if you're a wholesaler, that's, that, that's fine in this market. So mm -hmm. it's a return, you need, you need there's two, the, the number you need to know is what is the cost per deal? Right. And what's my profit per deal? Cost per deal means, hey, I'm gonna spend $2,000 to make $15,000 in wholesale flips. That's a 7X, 700% return. Right. Get it out, right? The, the next thing is that you, you should, you, <clears throat> or your sales guys just assume all leads suck. All the leads coming in, all the leads off of the direct mail are going to suck. And, for, and, and if you have that mentality, you have to talk to these sellers. You have to ask them the right questions, right? So true. It's, there's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a human interaction. And, um, and, and so it's funny because some, I can't tell you how many people in the past I've talked to and they're like, yeah, my direct mail hasn't been working. And it's like, well, let's talk about how many sellers have you called? And it's like, okay, what about this seller? What about this seller? And they never call him. It's like, no, you have to, you, somebody has to have a human interaction. You have to make an offer. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. If, if people are like, how do you find the deals? How do you find the off-mark deals? Like, well, how many people did you talk to? Well, I sent out, you know, a hundred yellow letters and, and no one called. And I said, well, that's why you didn't do any deals because you didn't actually talk to anybody. Yeah. Right. The whole, like, there's all these great tricks and gimmicks and gadgets and, and these fancy postcards and the, the, the flavor of the day. But if you're not talking to anybody, it doesn't matter. So I think the one thing that you touched on, consistency is key, right? You've got to be consistent, as you pointed out, our friend of the show, Justin Colby, with a 0.4%, he's just consistent with it. And that's why it's, it works for him, right? Um, and, and then also looking at it as, you know, if you're looking for a four to one return on investment of your ad spend, you still might have to spend $10,000 to get the 40,000, right? But that all just comes through consistency. What is your advice for someone who has a small marketing budget? Spend the money and get it out. If, if you're, if, if, do it on your own. I, Chris Chico, here's a perfect example. Chris Chico, this is years ago. He got a Discover card in the mail and with, for $10,000. And, and he, he loves sharing this story. 
he had ten thousand dollars available on the on the credit card and it's like his credit actually wasn't all that great at the time and so he used all the ten thousand dollars to nail and made a hundred grand and by the way he's made millions of dollars since then right but he would have never done it if he didn't spend the money on marketing marketing is a return on investment um if you have you know most markets you know, fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred dollars in marketing spend on average across the country should result enough leads to convert into a deal if you're talking to the seller and you're working. How much was that? Twenty five hundred a month? You know, fifteen hundred in the center of the country, mm-hmm. twenty five hundred, you know, if you're in California, you're probably at seven thousand dollars or more a deal in right. marketing. If you're in Florida, you're probably twenty twenty eight hundred. If you're in Dallas right now, it's probably close to four to forty five hundred per deal, right? So you, mm-hmm. you spend $4,500 in Dallas, but if you're flipping a property, you're typically making probably 16 to 18,000. It's still a four to four to one right. return across the country. Right. So if, 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 you know, get it out, number one, uh, I do think it's important. I come from a sales background and so there's the discipline, there's the art and the science. I'm going to give mm-hmm. the science here. This is, this is, this is time tested even Ron LeGrand and Lou Brown and all the old timers, these were the same numbers and Dan Kennedy. Doing direct mail and frankly, even cold calling, uh, probably even close to pay-per-click, 45 leads, all right? 45 leads, typically mm-hmm. a lead being a seller, a, a seller calling, right? And you got, their, their, you got their information. 45 of those leads, about one third of them are gonna be viable or what Sean and a lot of us called net leads, right? The good ones where the seller didn't hang up and they didn't um, you know, tell you to be removed from the list or they're not interested. So 45 turns into 15, mm-hmm. about half of those should be made offers to. Mm-hmm. So that gives you about seven. And by the way, you sh- over time you should make all, all offers, but seven of them should get an offer, a, a written offer. And one of those out of the seven should close. And that's if you're not even very good at this business, right? And then it's yeah. just optimization. I know Just, Justin and I were talking about it. His number is 50. Um, and I think that that because of the competitive market, especially in Phoenix. So, so if you just plan that, it's like, okay, how much money do I have to spend to get 45 leads, mm-hmm. right? And, um, and, and <clears throat> so that, that number is very calculable. You can calculate that. In fact, I have a tool. I'll give it to all of your listeners. They can calculate their own. We call it a scorecard. It'll mm-hmm. tell you the exact cost per deal. Um, the number of leads you need, the marketing budget. Um, we'll put that in the show notes for you at the very end. Is that cool, Matt? Or I could get yeah, hundred percent. Actually, we built up a a web page just for um, the services that we like and trust, like yours. So there'll be just one place place that they can go to to get it. So we'll we'll talk about that in a minute. Awesome. I'll give your guys um, your. I'll give everybody the script. So mm-hmm. if you have any questions on what to say to a seller to get a yes. Um, the script of what to say, you could actually give this, if you don't use REI vault to do the phone work for you, you can give mm-hmm. it to somebody else and say, follow this. This is awesome. the same script we use. It's a, uh, it's, it's incredible. In fact, a lot of the CG guys actually helped me, uh, Clay Manship and, and, uh, and others helped me write the script of what to say, you know, uh, the exact question, the icebreaker, you know, how Perfect. to, say, and I'll give it to you guys. Great. We'll put that up there then. Super. Thank you very much for that. All right, so we've got the list. Um, we've got the, the mailing piece. Do you do letters at all? We do. Actually, the letters, the best letters, in fact, I will show you one. The best time to use letters is going to be for follow-up. Uh, and here's the example. This is the letter. This is actually the best performing marketing piece. It's been the best piece for over 10 years. This is a follow-up, a million-dollar follow-up letter. In fact, mm-hmm. I'm living in a house right now in California I bought off of this letter. The seller called off a postcard. She said she wanted to be removed from the list. She mm-hmm. was concerned on why we were sending mail to her. We actually were sending it every day, by the way, because we really wanted the house. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so got on the phone and then we sent her this follow-up letter. And uh, uh, three months later, she called and said, are you still looking to buy the house? And I bought it and was in contract that day. But it, it's a yellow letter. It goes into, this is the, really the only time I like yellow letters, um, but it's got a fake cancellation mark. These things need to look like they were mailed locally, super mm-hmm. important. And red ink versus blue, believe it or not, the red ink will twice perform the blue ink. I, I have no idea why, um, hmm. but it's just, it's, just, it's just a fact. And then 
needs to be personalized. And these are great. We have a lot of our members that sign up. And one of the first things we do is say, hey, give us your old crappy leads, all the stuff that you have not been able to close. Mm -hmm. And we'll take those and we'll put them on this follow-up letter and we're turning deals off of it. Nice. So that's, that's, that's the very first thing. We're like, let's take the old crappy lead. So um, that's typically when we're sending out letters. We are testing a new offer letter. Um, you know, a lot of us have had pressure from Open Door, right? And mm-hmm. OfferPad and, and, uh, and Zillow. And so we are working. We have a new uh, marketing piece that is a letter. It actually doesn't even go in an envelope. And it, it is an offer. And so we're working on the algorithm right now that mm-hmm. we can actually put, you know, what's the price so that we can get our foot in the door. And then we're t- usually we test it out with 10 or 15 of our top members that are, mm-hmm. you know, high volume. And, and, uh, and then we test it out. And once we see it working, then we produce it and pass it to everybody. Yeah, we've, we've used that in two different scenarios. I've gotten great results with it. One was, um, is an offer that uh, my, my guy, Josh in Nebraska, he sent it, sent it out to 175 people that said no to him. I think this is the right number. And he got 51 deals out of it, the offer. Yeah. These were, these, it, the number is a little bit bigger than that, how many said no. But he just took everybody that ever said no to him that year, sent the thing, and 51 of them came back signed. Yeah. Which I thought was extraordinary numbers. I mean, it, was, it represented half of his production for the whole year. Yeah. The other thing that we do is, um, you know, we do, we have, uh, we do our own version of factor stacking over here. So we'll take the, the, the absentee list and the divorce list and the tax lien list and put them on top of each other. And we give them a little score depending on how many lists they appear on that name. And those that have the highest score, yeah, we put uh, a signed purchase agreement inside of a FedEx envelope. Like, you know, <laughs> we may only have 15, 20 of them. So, right. But those that have that appear on all those different lists, like they got issues. <laughs> they need some cash, right? Yeah. So, yeah. The, uh, do you do anything like with um, the lumpy mail or anything like that? We did years ago. Mm-hmm. I, I, we've, I've sent out five or 600,000 pieces of lumpy mail with the candy in it. I mean, yeah. the, the garbage can with it crumpled up. None of that's relevant anymore. Uh, basically, good copy will outproduce. You know, dollar yeah. to dollar, it's, it's not just the response rate, it's the cost, right? It's the cost. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, like w- why we like postcards, we like postcards to generate the lead to generate the first phone call mm-hmm. and then offer packages, text messages, follow-up letters mm-hmm. uh, that, that you never really need to send a, a seller a postcard after they've called. It should always be follow-up letters. You know, you were talking about the offer package. So Kent Clothier and I, you were there at CG. Kent was telling me, um, for, for, uh, <clears throat> um, Kent basically said he did a test in, in he's a massive mailer right? right but he did a test in san diego and he said the best thing that ever worked was a fedex envelope and an offer he goes i'd never even talked to these sellers and he said you know we just got really busy and i've never done it again so i i reviewed this with him and this is what we came up with and we've had these in we've been doing this for our members for years so this is what we call it's kind of what we call a one-click offer this is a press of a button it goes out but it's a fake I shouldn't call it a fake. I mean, it's just, a, it's a, it looks like a FedEx envelope. Right. Um, it, it's got the, the label on it. You can, the, the company is actually in Florida. So if anybody wanted to go do this themselves, you mm-hmm. can. These envelopes, you definitely want to use the full size one. We've actually tested the smaller half size to save some money and it doesn't produce as well. Mm-hmm. Um, we put an offer letter. It looks like it's handwritten. And, and again, we do this for our members. You don't have to do anything. Click a button. This sheet of paper is worth you know, an offer price, 180,000 for the next 30 days. And we, you know, have some good marketing copy of like the difference between selling to us and selling through somebody else. And then two signed contracts, one page cash offer and a return envelope. So there's a return envelope that we stick in there and all they do is put a stamp on, stick it in the mail. And, uh, and that's worked really well for us. So I, you know, same type of thing. It's like one way or the other, get an offer in the hands of these people. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, 100%. Who was, I was just chatting with, who was it yesterday? Uh, gosh, I've had so many. I talked to uh, Pat Hebon. Do you know him? He runs Go Abundance. I've seen uh, the name. Oh, Is it, I didn't... Yeah, Steve, Steve, it was Steve uh, or Mitch Steven. And we were talking about how a seller wanted 
the seller wanted one hundred and eighty thousand dollars, and he's like, "This, there's no way that I, I'm going to, I'm going to offer more than one hundred and five. So he sent an offer at one hundred and five. His team wasn't going to do it. He said, "Send the offer for one hundred and five. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, the offer came back signed. Right? Yeah. The seller was absolutely. There's no way they're going to take less than one eighty, and they sent him an offer. Right? So the that, that's the business. The this business. is so good. It's so good. It's the whole. This is why the 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 emphasis on right offers, right offers, right offers. And, and I did a blog post about, it was about eight years ago, nine years ago. And it was how to, how to do more deals. And the whole blog post just said, write more offers. And, you know, and the whole dynamic changes when, when something isn't actually in writing, right? Yeah. There's a, there, we have a video for this. I actually, uh, we have a coach Willie and I've sent this out to so many REI vault members, right? It's, this is just classic sales, but they did a, a, a study, a dating study on who, wh- guys who could date more women. Okay, true study. And they basically said, okay, we're going to take one guy and give him the perfect script of what to say, like how to schmooze a girl and the perfect words to say and, and, and all that. And then they had the second guy, they gave him the great looking car, the Ferrari and the suit. And then the third guy, they did nothing. They just said, we want you to just ask more women out on a date. Mm. And mm-hmm. guess who won? It was the guy asked more. Ask more. This is a numbers game. By the way, this is just classic. There, this is a sale. This is a this is a sales business, right? right? The money. It, it, there's marketing and there's sales. And if you don't know, I mean, there's a sale in everything, like husband and wife. And if you don't know whether you got sold, you were probably the one that got sold. Right. Right. <laughs> right? If you're not selling, you're getting sold. Exactly. Yeah. But it is a lot of fun. You know, it's not that hard. This is, it's people, it's more, it's a, it's a human business. People buy and sell to people that they like, trust and respect. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, I can't tell you how many, I mean, there was a gal, um, one of my favorite deals. She wanted 750,000 for the house. Kay Bohr was her name in California. Beautiful house, 750. And I'm like, I mean, on a good day, this thing, I, I think I sold it for 550. And uh, she's like, 750. I cannot take less than 750. Well, I went into contract for 410. So I, I, you know, creatively. So it took me six months. It was a six month transaction, but 750 from what they want. So remember, it doesn't matter what the seller wants. You have to make them an offer. It's a, there's a psychological, there's a point in time when the sellers will make the decision to sell, right? Mm-hmm. And, and usually if they want a high price, they're just not emotionally ready to detach from the, the property. It's a big decision for them. Right, perfect. All right, so we've got the list, we've got the, the mailing piece and the different ways to send that and the different times to send it. Now the phone rings, tell me what happens. Yeah, so the, the, uh, the phone rings, we, we recommend a lot a lot of our members we recommend somebody take the call live a lot of our people actually have somebody in their office to take the call live we'll usually set up uh any overflow phone work that needs to get done so that so 24 7 there's a phone team we we like uh pat live and we like call porter so we've mm-hmm. partnered with them we've cut special discounts for our members we've given them our script so pat live isn't just pat live they're actually on our our script that's tied into our system so it's like pat live on steroids um and then a lot of these calls a lot of the work though here's here's the, uh, you know that i'm a numbers guy but mm-hmm. this is a national i didn't make the number up this is across other industries as well but 80% of all the profits in real estate come between the fifth and the 12th interaction with the seller. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. most people, they're only talking to the seller once, right? They're taking the call live and they're saying, and they never talk to them again. And so what we do is we put the, this is called an inside sales team, ISA. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you're looking at the screen here in front of you, it's the outbound phone team. This is the team that's actually doing the callbacks, right? Dialing for dollars all day long on leads that have come in already. And so, you know, a lot of sellers, some of the best leads we've ever seen are hangups. People that call in and they just hang up for some mm-hmm. reason, mm-hmm. right? Or they call in and they say they're not interested. That's, those are goldmine leads, by the way, but you have to wait for four months. So they're not going to be any good for four months. You start calling them. We're converting those like crazy right now for our members. Mm-hmm. So our, our phone team, we use, a, we actually set up a, a Podio system, unless our members have their own. Mm-hmm. But those leads automatically get pushed over to an auto dialer, 
that we've set up. We use Five9. It, it's all integrated. So our, 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 our members don't have to, you know, our clients don't have to set up anything. So the, the leads come in, they get pushed over to the, the auto dialer, and then we have got a team of t- over 25 people that are actually dialing for dollars all day long, get, trying to get the s- seller on the, on the phone. If they don't answer, they call a few hours later. If they don't answer, they call the next day over and over and over again. Sweet. You can go to buyheregetmore.com, and I'll put up uh, the, the KPI spreadsheet Gary's going to give us, and then he's also going to give you the script. And then I would imagine, I would like to, I wish we had time for the full demo. Do you have a, a link you can give me to like a video demo of the whole system and work and play? You know, the best place would be, uh, we do, and the best place would be at reivault.com. And, and I'll, I'll give it over to you as well. Okay. So. Yeah, so they all, it's all in one place. They can just go there and go, then go to buy here, get more, and then uh, we'll go from there. Alrighty? Yeah, perfect. And the one thing I would say, if you are, if you're ready to scale and you want to check out REI Vault, just make sure you tell us that you came from Epic or Matt Terrio. We are, we are an invite only group. So um, it's just, I mean, this is like a mastermind. So we want to make sure we, you know, you're a good fit for us and we're a good fit for you. And, um, and, and so just make sure you tell us that you came from Epic. The reason is, is that you get a lot of people, they just, they don't know how to close deals. They're, they haven't been coached. And, uh, and so it's really, it's the, ref- the people, like our members are referring others to us. So just let us know that Matt sent you. You bet. Perfect. Thank you, Gary. You've been, we'll do this again though, because there's a lot more that we could cover. Um, but uh, it's good to see you again. And your podcast, you've got a brand new podcast. Plug it real quick. Yeah, realestateinvestor.com, Huddle. Huddle? Huddle, H-U-D-D-L-E. Yeah, my company is realestateinvestor.com. So real oh, you investor. sneaky guy. I'm envious of that uh, domain <laughs> name you got there. <laughs> Congrats. Couldn't happen to a better guy. All right, Gary, take care. All right, Matt. See ya. You bet. All righty, so that's it for today. I'll see you next week on another episode of Thought Leader Thursday right here on the Epic Real Estate Investing Show. Take care.